Okay, we have another question. How is it possible to motivate someone not to be self-destructive? This is from Rachel. If someone is self-destructive, what are we seeing? What are we hearing? What, what's going on? It's It goes against nature, really. Where nature um, dictates that everything desires and pursues its own existence, preservation of matter, and so on. Certainly human beings have a survival instinct. So if a person is self-destructive, I mean, you can call it an illness, but even that seems to be so out of line with nature that it's almost hard to believe. It's almost hard to believe that the system can work against itself. I know that there are auto, autoimmune uh, diseases where the body destroys itself, but we need a, a deeper insight into that as well. How and why would that happen? Now, when something is about to hit us over the head, naturally we put our arm up to protect our head. But you know your arm is going to get hurt. So are you really protecting yourself? You're just getting hit on your arm. And yet we do that instinctively because our survival instinct. The survival instinct says, better the arm than the head. The arm is not as dangerous. So in a, in a self-destructive behavior, the person is actually trying to protect himself, but he feels like he has to sacrifice the less important part of himself for the, I don't know, the essence of himself. So, what is it that a person is trying to protect, and from what? So a self-destructive behavior needs to be analyzed and understood as a self-defense mechanism. What am I defending? You know, a person who would rather die than be embarrassed. Is that self-destructive? Or is that his value system? It's more valuable to me to have a clean reputation than to survive. So I'm not self-destructive. I'm making a choice based on what is most important to me. Now, how to motivate such a person to not be self-destructive? Whatever it is that makes a person uh, desperate is always coming from the animal soul. The animal soul being mortal, being fragile, being vulnerable, is always protecting itself against bigger threats, smaller threats, even little discomforts. So it's only the animal soul that uh, that gets desperate. The animal soul is concerned mostly with survival and existence. It is not surprising that a person who gets focused on how to exist better is going to get depressed, and is going to get desperate, and is going to do desperate things. The first thing we need to explain to a person, even when they're not desperate, they're not self-destructive, is that there is more to you than your existence. You have a life to live, a contribution to make. You are obviously necessary in God's plan. So instead of worrying about what you're worrying about, 
Try worrying about what God worries about. Then you've got him on your side, you're more likely to succeed. So if we're walking on God's path, he, you know, he's, he's got a vested interest, he is going to help us. If we're just doing our own thing, trying to protect myself, that, for that I'm on my own and there's no guarantee of success. So we're not telling the person that what he is desperate about is not true, not real, not important. What we're saying is there is something much more important. Like the Alta Rebbe says in Tanya, <clears throat> we have to serve God with joy. Well, what if I have plenty of reason to be miserable? So the Alta Rebbe says, whatever reason you have for being miserable, that's just your animal part. That's just your human soul. And you're right. It's embarrassing. We are flawed human beings, etc., etc. But that's only half the story. And maybe not even half. The bigger part of you is that you have a godly soul, which means you have a godly mission. And whether you like yourself, whether you're impressed with yourself or not, what God needs from you is indispensable. So it's really not that important how talented you are as long as you can get the job done. God's job. And that gives you a much greater satisfaction than trying to fix your own issues. And that's true, again, not only of a person who is self-destructive, but every child growing up needs to know this, you know, before they become self-destructive. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program, there's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best and join us for some enjoyable conversation.